Hello guys, so today I will be talking about the piece Requiem in D minor K66. I will be doing the introduction day, introduction today. The And the composer of the piece was Wolfgang M Amadeus. Sorry if I said that incorrect. I apologize. Mozart. So just a little bit about the composer. He was born in January of 1756 and died on December 5th of 1791 and remember that date is very important on the time in this death but basically Wolfgang um, Mozart was a very very prominent and prolific composer of the classical period and was very influential as well and he also studied and wrote in Vienna so just a little bit of history on the piece it is a requiem mass basically a requiem mass is music that is performed in honor of the dead. The term requiem mass comes from the Latin phrase requiem eternum dona es domine, which means grant them eternal rest, O Lord. So in this piece, this piece was commissioned by Count Franz von Welsegg Stupak and I I apologize if I said that incorrect as well. But basically he wrote this piece to commemorate his wife who passed earlier that year. Sadly, just like I said before, the date December 5th, 1791, he passed away. So he left his work unfinished. So by the time of his death, he wrote the introduction and the Kyrie. Or no, just the introduction. And he sketched the Kyrie, the sequence hymn in Offertorium. The rest was finished by his students. And I have these names. I'm not sure how to pronounce them. I apologize. But they'll be at the bottom. So a little bit of instrumentation we have in the woodwind section. Two basset horns in F. We have a picture of them at the top. We have two bassoons. In the brass section, we have two trumpets and three trombones, alto, tenor, and bass. We have a timpani with two drums, an organ. In the string section, we have violins, violas, cellos, and double bass. And in the vocal section, we have soprano, contra-alto, tenor, and bass soloists. We also have a mix of soprano, alto, and tenor choir. So just a little bit of, we'll get into the piece. So basically when we hear the piece, we hear a soft and subtle entrance coming from the woodwinds and some of the brass. But all of a sudden we hear a loud and dissonant ensemble sound. And after that, a couple of measures in, of that sound we hear an introduction of the choir with a lot of lower male voices prominent and basically they will be singing grant them eternal rest lord with heavy and long phrases from the lines and i also have the um translations from the singing at the bottom left of your screen So as we just heard, we hear a, a lot of lower male voices present, but we also hear a lot of poly um, no, 
of homophonic sounds. We have, in the beginning, we have a solo of a basset horn or a bassoon with the accompaniment of the, uh, the rest of the ensemble. And once the male voices come in, we hear more homophonic sounds with the male voices being the melody and the rest of the ensemble of the winds as the accompaniment. So also in the in the first movement of this piece, we hear the first solo. We have, it starts on the third line of the um, translations at the bottom left of your screen. The solo is a a female soloist. So during the solo, we hear a semi-active accompaniment in the background for the soloist with the lighter texture and softer dynamics. We hear a lot of strings present and homophonic texture. So just like we heard, we have a homophonic texture with a lot of strings present. We have we hear more of the higher strings in this section with the violas and the violins. So in the next section of this piece, we go back to a full vocal and instrumental playing with a rich and full texture. We also hear a lot of melody trading from the accompaniment to the choir, a lot of polyphonic work. We also hear melody training or melody trading, sorry, between the male and females of the choir. A lot of loud dynamics and a lot of strings present with a, just maybe a little bit of brass as well. And we will be starting online five where it says hear my prayer if you want to follow it So as we get towards the end of this piece, we hear a lot of big brass moments in the beginning of the clip that I will play for you here in a minute. But after the big brass moments, we go to a mix of both brass and strings with a slight decrescendo towards the end of the piece. We have a little bit of a lighter texture than we did before. And as we get closer to the end of the piece, we hear a lot of more male voices prominent very low as well. So like we just heard, we hear a lot of homophonic sounds with the male voices in the beginning being the melody and the rest of the strings and brass being the accompaniment. 
But as we get further along this piece, we also hear a, the same rhythms happening between the the voices and the strings and brass as well until we get to the end of the piece in that really nice beautiful D minor chord. So I'll just talk a little bit about the classical characteristics of the piece. First off we see the usage of choir. We also hear clear and clean texture changes. So basically it's very clean between the homophonic sections and the polyphonic sections. We also hear a good amount of usage of minor and dissonant tonalities of the piece. We also see more usage of brass in the orchestra. And it is very easy on the ear as well. So while the music can have a minor or dissonant you know, moments and tonalities. It is very easy on the ear and very enjoy enjoyable to hear. And also we hear a lot of more instrumental. So the string, or not the strings, the woodwinds and the brass more prominent as well. Just like we hear in the big brass moments near the end of the piece. Well, thank you for listening to my presentation today. Again, my piece was on Requiem in D minor, K66, by Mozart, and I did the introduction. Thank you.